It would have been right after the release, 1995-96. But uh, some of those stories were already being published in the Finnish Donald Duck magazine beforehand. So I read those. But uh, for the first time, when I read all the chapters in chronological order, that would have been 1996, I think. And um, about three years later, it was in the fall of 99, I had the original idea to paint the story with music one day and actually the first person I ever told about this idea was Tony Kakkov's Another Arctica and mm -hmm. because he's an equally big Don Rosa fan as I am and he said yeah that's a really cool idea and if you ever do that please ask me to join it and that has happened now I've grown up with Disney comics since I was like two years ago, uh, two years old. Um, the Disney films and the whole world has always been really important part of my life, um, especially Carl Parks. But then Don Rosa came along in the beginning of the 90s and totally blew me away, especially this particular book. And uh, ever since then, it has been my Probably my all-time favorite fictional story. It is my Desert Island book. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's pretty much as simple as this. Whenever I read those stories, I hear music. I hear different melodies and instruments really, really strongly. Because the book in itself is rather cinematic. So I just thought it would be a cool idea to uh, let all that music come out and see what happens, how would it sound like on a CD. And I also fancied the idea of uh, maybe being the first one to ever write a soundtrack to a graphic novel. Uh, I don't think it's been done before. Well, naturally, it develops a little bit while writing. I mean, the original idea for this album was it to be purely instrumental and much more ambient than the result is. At some point during the songwriting, I realized that uh, maybe I should add some lyrics, some human voices, even a few choruses here and there, like the more traditional song structures, to make the whole album a bit more accessible and interesting. It would have been about a year ago. Mm. We had a break from uh, the Nightwish tour after Australia and before the summer festivals. I, I was at home for about four or five months and that's where I did most of my songwriting and lyric writing. Mm -hmm. Well, it was a fascinating idea because when you read the book, he, he goes all around the world twice. Uh, he has his adventures in the Scottish Highlands, in the Wild West, in Australia, uh, in Africa. So uh, the potential to use different ethnic elements, sounds, instruments was huge. And that's something that I really loved. Um, so. We have the didgeridoo there in one of the songs. We have the uh, Scottish instrument, the Celtic vibe. We have the Ennio Morricone style, Wild West in track number two, Into the West. So it was just a really fascinating roller coaster ride around the world. And so much fun to do. He was quite enthusiastic from the beginning, but he hadn't read the book. Um, so the first thing I sent, sent him the book, said, uh, re read it through, tell me what you think. 
and uh, he read it, he understood immediately what I was going after. Uh, and he was really excited from the beginning. I mean, we're talking about uh, quite a marginal project here. And uh, to people who are not into this book, who don't know who Don Rosa is, it might sound really far-fetched, even, even naive, so to say. But then again, if you think about the concept of Lord of the Rings, it's equally childish. It's a children's book, so to say. But uh, people don't think it that way. So leave your prejudices aside and give it a shot. <laughs> I believe it was back in 2010, um, he was promoting one of his books in Finland and I got a chance to meet him after a press conference in Helsinki for about five minutes and I told him about this idea of mine, he listened to me very politely, I gave him a Nightwish CD and, and that was it. Uh, I don't think he know took it that seriously and I don't blame him but then two years later I emailed him told him that uh, this thing is actually gonna happen I have the studios booked uh, I have some of the songs ready and I would love for you to draw the cover artwork and uh, he said that yeah I can try but uh, I haven't done anything since 2006 so are you sure you want me to do it and I told absolutely because you know, this project is just screaming your name. And then he came up with the most beautiful artwork for the cover. Uh, he even gave me some of his original sketches for the CD layout and for the music video that nobody has seen before. Uh, I was really privileged by that. And then he over, uh, also flew over to Finland to shoot the music video for the song A Lifetime of Adventure with us. So wow, that was quite a fanboy moment for me. Uh, well, we meet, email each other every now and then. He's gonna fly over in April for the album release party in Helsinki. We're gonna do a signing session and uh, some promotion and just celebrate the album release together. So yeah, we are still in touch. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't have an actual character, he's just a storyteller in one of the songs called Cold Heart of the Klondike. Uh, the other three singers, they all have parts. Alan Reed uh, is singing the part of Scrooge himself. Then there's Johanna Kurkala, who's singing uh, the part of Glittering Goldie, and Johanna Ivanainen doing the voice of uh, Scrooge's mother and uh, his sister. But uh, Tony is just an outside storyteller, so to say. How I chose these particular guest musicians and singers for this album was that I just brought in my closest friends and then we did this album together. That was the uh, philosophy behind it. I mean, Pip Williams, Troy Danakli, both Johannes, Mikko, Ivananen in the guitar and the banjo. I mean, they're all my best friends and it was just a lovely idea of bringing them all together and doing this thing together. Yes. Something that I would definitely love to do again in the future, somehow. It is the only song on the whole album with an actual structure. There isn't really any other song that you could do a single release from. I think there are three songs with a chorus on the whole album and I mean this song has a clear beginning, clear end. There's the verses, there's the chorus, there's the C part. So uh, 
was the only and the obvious choice for Sin. It can be either way. I don't, I don't mind. I mean, if you are into the book, if you're into Don Rosa, and you read the book while listening to the CD, that would be the ultimate combination, I guess. But the music still works, even though you had no idea what the book is about. I mean, I listen to a lot of film music myself, and I love soundtracks of films that I've never seen. So it doesn't really make a difference.